Yo, I didn't start nothing that I couldn't finish. Now I'm all up in it and I'm giving it all I can give it when I hear the drums. Oh, it gets me to tripping. Once I was slipping, losing my grip and drums brought me back. Fact is a fact. Now I stand tall, not trapped. Back in the map and putting salt to mook in it too. To all the ones dancing to the drums, do what you do. Do it cause it feels real. Link as it surely heals. In the past we walked together, so this way let it stay. When the earth turns over, man, we could go back again. We are coming together. We are woman forever. Show your love to the mother and she'll carry us through. We keep on using them drums to stick us like glue. Cause so much is unseated, overtreated, bled and bleeding. And what's really needed is a movement. So let's do this. My English name is Carrie Lynn Victor. And my Huomuskui, my traditional name is Humantala. It comes from this area, the eastern Fraser Valley. I'm a hip hop artist a visual artist, and uh, a mom. My name is Teresa Point. I come from the Stella Nation. I'm 26 years old. I've been doing hip hop, MC, writing, expressing myself with that sort of venue since about 2005. The reason why we're so connected to hip hop music is because of the way it speaks to us. Right? And because of what we hear, we, we connect with the message, we connect with the hardships, we connect with having a broken heart or, or dealing with addictions. And it all gets tied together by this wonderful bass and beat and boom, boom, boom. You know, you ever hear a car with a huge system drive by yeah. and you hear that bass and it's like boom, boom, boom. You know what that reminds me of? It reminds me of the drum. You know, it reminds me of the, of the, of the big drum at Palau's or, you know, the drumming that we do in the longhouse. And I think innately, like somewhere in our cellular conscious level, we are connected to that. And that's why it's so appealing to us. You know, that, that beat and that sound is something that we hear for nine months when we're in our mother's womb. Mm -hmm. We hear her heartbeat, right? And so when we come out, we're naturally going to feel most comfortable around that. All Indigenous people across the world if you look at their culture and their history, you know, a lot of them will have uh, ceremonies and teachings centered around the drum, heartbeat, Mother Earth. It's all connected. Hip hop has been a part of my life probably for half my life. Um, I'm 28 and I've been rapping since I was 14. So, started out in the closet uh, writing poems and testing out different vocal sounds and emphasis and um, you know listening to West Coast rap at the time so everything from like Ghetto Boys, Spice One, Tupac, um, gangster rap type stuff I was really rolling with my cousins at the time and they were into the whole gangster vibe so um, with all of its glorification and enticement I followed along and I, um, my music was heavily influenced by that movement at the time, the Native youth movement specifically. Um, there was a lot of rebellion here in the Fraser Valley by our people against the Department of Fisheries and Oceans. Hip hop was a way to express mm, poetically what we were saying in our actions. A lot of um, battles on the river, a lot of long nights spent around a fire, um, a lot of people talking about coming together and using like a warrior type approach, a real warrior approach to fighting back against the powers that were oppressing us at the time. Um, battles were fought on the river, we wrote about that. You know, the railways were blocked, blockaded, we fought about, you know, we fought about that, so we rapped about that. Um, we felt strong as a team, so we sang about that. A lot of inspiration came from the unity and just that our people are, are so creative. And when you struggle like that, so much comes out of it. And the creative aspect that came out of it is still alive today.
I'm tight, so right, step light all night. Through my dreams until tomorrow, never hollow. Always gotta go deep, gotta reap the sweep of the flow. As far as it will go. I think what I do is I just speak from the heart. I, I just really a lot of times I don't have a set intention, but I let my essence and my values and my soul speak through the music. And that's what it has to say. It wants people to be aware about the hardships that we've suffered as a people. You know, that stuff needs to be known. It needs mm -hmm. to be made public. And if I have any sort of intention in doing hip hop music, it's so that the world knows you know, so that mainstream society knows that we've survived, you know, we're here and we're just like everybody else. You know, we've had, we have our own history, but that doesn't make us any less deserving of good things, of good fortune. I'm trying to be on the edge of, of what, what's possible for mankind, not just for native people. You know, I'm talking about mankind and the world movement in consciousness, our own evolution, you know, because we've done a lot. We've come a long way, you know, from cavemen to the Middle Ages to Industrial Revolution to now we're on a technological revolution. I mean, we share information in an instant, a text message, an email, you know, instant chat, BBMs, Blackberry. We're so interconnected. It's almost like we're reading each other's thoughts. That's how close we are to being on the edge, the very cutting edge of our own consciousness. And sort of in a way, moving back to where we were when we were living naturally as Indigenous people, you know, pre-colonization. Those gifts that we had somehow got lost in all the shuffle of residential school and abuse and alcohol and addictions and all that, right? We somehow forgot that we had these amazing gifts. And what I think is, is that we're moving, you know, not just as a people, but as mankind to a new part of our own evolution here on Earth. And personally, People aren't ready, I'm reaching out to the people that are ready. The adversity in being First Nations comes from ourselves, you know. It comes from our own people. And and they say things, they have said things in the past like, why are you making black music? Why are you, you know, why are you rapping? You should be singing our music. But I, I researched hip hop. Hip hop is world music, disco music, funk music, jazz music, blues music, the list goes on. It's, it's reggae, it's everything mashed together. And it came from multiculturalism. And as far as I'm concerned, I'm a multicultural individual. And our people have always utilized the best tools available to them for everything. That's, that's the, the evolution of a people and hip hop is evolution. When I talk about not breaking into mainstream, I honestly don't, I know how it works in that they want to decide how your hair is, they want to decide what you wear, they want to decide what you say. They're going to have an ed editor sitting next to you while you're writing saying, we're not going to sing about that today, we're going to sing about this and they'll push paper to you, and, you know. We want your voice, we want your look, they want everything that we've been working hard for except the message. But it's all about the message. It's all about the message. And when I talk about the message, it comes from a place beyond me. My hip hop name, my MC name is Numinous. And when I say my name is Numinous, I'm acknowledging life purpose. And life purpose is not to sing about fluff and getting drunk and, you know, bopping around sleeping with men. That's not what my music is about at all. It's not fluff. It's deep. And I run, I just, I run that way, like I live that way. So I'll be true to myself and the industry doesn't really allow for a lot of room for people who are true to themselves. They know what sells, so they want to sell it. It's all about the money. We met in 2005. I was just coming off of probably like one of the most difficult times in my life. Yeah, where I had problems and issues with addictions and you know I had just entered into doing 
wintertime ceremonies with my family and all that kind of stuff. And I was sort of like trying to pick up the pieces again. You know, after you go through something that's pretty heavy and that's big and then you try to pick up the pieces again and, and figure out what you're going to do. Like, what's my next move? Mm -hmm. That's what I was doing. And I went out to an audition for a theater group in Vancouver. And then all of a sudden I started writing rhymes and listening and sort of following the movement and where it was coming from. And bound I met Carrie Lynn. She was at this open mic and, and I was spinning some written rhymes that I had done and, and she really liked what I was saying and, and what I was about and she asked me to maybe collaborate with her on a song. So we did that. We wrote Down to Ride. There's many uncertainties. Tomorrow is always going to be uncertain. Um, I have strong views about the conscious shift that people all over the world are making e this year, and I have um, I have ideas about what like what we see around us is the Earth like closing in on us. We're over capacity for fuel, we're over capacity for food, we're making new babies every day, I made a new baby. People get all like in a huff about that. Why are you making babies? The world's over capacity. I said, my son chose me and his father. He chose to be alive in this time. And I think that the world is at its maximum capacity because something's gonna happen. And the joy partially is in not knowing what that is and just living for our moment. So when I'm afraid for him, yeah, I'm afraid that the salmon stocks are gonna be gone in 10 years or that he's not gonna have, you know, the, the access to culture the way that we have it now. We use our creeks for spiritual activities and I have seen creeks closed, filled in and um, bought in my short time alive, like, like burgers, mm -hmm. you know, like poof, that creek's gone, there's a gate, or that creek's gone, the trees were all logged and now it's just a mess. All kinds of, you know, all kinds of concerns, but ultimately I teach him that it's about this moment, it's about now, and you live for now and you do the best you can right now, tomorrow is always uncertain.